This week I received an email from Jeremy and he is a runner who uses intervals once a week to work on his anaerobic threshold and his top end sprint speed. The question came up is, if my results on my intervals are starting to become inconsistent, how do I know if that's a fitness issue, i.e. being fatigued and maybe overtraining, or how do I know if that's a dehydration issue? And I thought this was a really good question that I wanted to share with you guys. If you follow me for any period of time, we've talked about the idea that dehydration will drive up the heart rate. As the surface area of the cell becomes smaller, it's not able to carry as much oxygen. The oxygen demands of the muscles are the same, so because there's less oxygen per red blood cell, the heart rate's gonna be artificially elevated. So very, I'm, I'm very impressed that you're able to pick up on those small details. How do you know if you're fatigued? Well, what you're able to do is look at your pace and compare that to your average and your max heart rate. If your average and your max is you know, within a couple points of one another based on history, so let's say that you're on a six week training block, you're comparing weeks number two to number three to number four, they should be relatively the same. Our goal of course is to get slightly faster but at the same or even a lower heart rate because your aerobic capacity is improving. Go back to the original question. How do you know if your speed is not getting faster or in this case it actually started to regress? How do you know if that's a fatigue issue or if that's a dehydration issue? Well, you have to start with a dehydration. If you weigh yourself before and you weigh yourself after and you factor in how much fluid you consumed, you should be in that sweet spot of having a sweat rate loss between one and 2%. No less, no more. If you're new to our channel, in our description box here on YouTube, we have ac you have a link and immediate access to the sweat rate calculator. Very simple. You weigh yourself before and after your activity and you document how many ounces of fluid you took in, it'll give you your sweat rate. When you're done with your interval set and you do that calculation, if you're in that sweet spot of one to 2% and your interval paces are getting slower or stagnating at any level, you know that it's more of a fatigue related issue because you've checked off the box of dehydration first and foremost. Super important for both quality and of course for health because your body needs fluid to dissipate heat through the form of sweat. Now we get a chance to go and look at the idea of if you're in your sweet spot one to two percent one to two percent sweat rate now we need to look at your volume of training your frequency and the overall intensity and bounce that up against your ability to absorb which only comes through quality sleep and food both quality and quantity for that matter so do you see how w when the question comes in hey why are my interval speeds starting to have a little bit of a regression Am I doing too much? I, you can't answer that with just a definitive yes or no. You've got to look underneath the hood a little bit. If you're getting eight to nine hours of sleep and you've got good sleep ratios, two hours of deep sleep, less of 15 awake time, we know the quality of sleep is there. Eight plus hours, good ratios. If we look at your calorie burn rate and we look at your food intake and you're within two, 300 calories of that, not allowing there to be a big calorie gap, then we know that you're getting adequate amounts of food. So now what we have to take a look at is what, what is the volume of training? Is it too much? Is it too often? Is the intensity too high for too long of a period of time? Now you're able to differentiate between is it an overtraining issue or is it a hydration issue? All that really, you know, for the context of this conversation, what really was the genesis for it was that we want to get faster and we're not seeing that incremental improvement, even though the consistency and dedication is there. And I love this kind of a question because it tells me you're paying attention to details. Don't just plod your way through a workout. Always know what the purpose of the workout is, have a definitive purpose of why you're there, and then make sure that you have a way to quantifiably validate that the work you're putting in is actually working. It sounds a little elementary in this video, but it's something that we, when it comes to emails and phone calls and phone consultation, this is a high level of frustration for many, many people. They're willing to dedicate the time and the energy to put it in, you know, to put the sweat equity in, but they're not seeing the, the return on the effort that they're putting. So that's why I appreciated this question and I wanted to convert this to a video for all of our subscribers. If you happen to have a question similar to this, whether it's curiosity or a frustration, please send it to me. All of our subscribers would greatly appreciate it. 
the, the number of people who continue to subscribe goes up, so thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, please do us a favor, do so, turn on the notifications. That way you'll know when we put out a video, which is almost every day on YouTube. If you happen to have a question you want to send it in, please do so. You can send it to contact at coachrob.com. I want to thank you for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.